Hey everyone, I know it's been a while since I posted a video on Macedonian cooking, so welcome to another episode of Memories of Macedonia. Now tonight what I'm going to be doing is a part two of something that I've already posted, manja. Now if you haven't seen the other video, take a look. That dish contained stewing beef, potatoes, green beans, and it was really yummy and baked in the oven. This version of manja, and manja really is anything that's a meat and veg, okay? That's baked in an oven. Um, this version of what we also call manja is with pork, um, tomatoes, cabbage, um, some just a little bit of olive oil, water, and spices. It's really easy, guys. Um, I hope you try this one, and I'll be right back to show you what we're gonna need to make this version of manja. Be right back. All right, manja mock two. <clears throat> what I have here is a pork roast. This is a sirloin boneless pork roast. Now you guys can use any cut of pork that you like um, because this is going to be cooked in a slow oven until the meat is literally just falling apart and so tender. Like I said in the other video, traditionally this would have been made with, you know, cuts of meat that weren't so great um, cuts of meat that were leftovers and maybe tougher so this is going to be stewed down now if you have lots of fat on your pork go ahead and trim it off or you can actually roast it fat side up until the uh, the fat gets really crispy then what you do is um take it off once it's crispy cut it up for cracklings and then um, put the lid on to continue cooking so pork is the number one in this manja. Number two is the cabbage. Now this is a huge head of cabbage. I'm only making enough to feed me for the next couple of days, so I'll probably use half of this. Um, with cabbage, another cabbage product, is sauerkraut. Now this is, happens to be the wine sauerkraut, and please use that. Don't use cheap sauerkraut. Try to find a wine sauerkraut. For those of you who are squeamish about sauerkraut, once it's cooked, it really loses a lot of its pungency. It just leaves a really great flavor to this dish. And a lot of Balkan, um, Balkan cooking, um, Eastern European cooking, uses fermented or sour cabbage at some point in one of their dishes. You will also need tomatoes. And what I have here is a can of stewing tomatoes, which is completely fine. If you are like me and you don't want to throw away things, what I do is I freeze um, I freeze my tomatoes when they get really, really ripe, and I know I'm not going to use them, and I don't want them to go moldy on me. This is great for this kind of thing, because if you just let these thaw out just a little bit, the skins will just pop right off of them, and then you can throw them in, frozen or semi-frozen, and let them do their thing. So, freeze your tomatoes, guys. Don't let them go moldy on you, and throw them away. They're good for things like this. Our spices today are pretty simple. Garlic black pepper over here <laughs> and of course sea salt I have Mediterranean sea salt here you will need salt in this dish because you know you're you're, you're needing to salt the pork and the and the cabbage and um, now if you use um, the tomatoes with no salt in them even better because then you're controlling the salt even more lastly but not least a staple in Macedonian cooking is paprika and for this dish, again, you're going to use a lot of this. So I don't give measurements usually. It's usually by, by flavor and, and by feel. So you add as much as paprika as you see that you need, that you deem fit. But go heavy on the paprika because that's kind of what a flavor enhancer for this dish. The other thing you're going to need, which I did not bring here, um, lack of space, is water to cover. And you're going to need olive oil or um, a cooking oil like mazola or a blend a blended oil all right guys so these are all the ingredients we're going to need to make manja the second manja and i'll be right back and show you how we put all this together in the roasting pan be right back hey guys i'm just back quickly to show you what i've done with my cabbage um, i've cut it in half and i've cored it which means i've just taken out that rough core in the middle um, it's pretty fibrous and you don't want it in there. And then it's going to give it a rough shred. I mean, don't make the pieces too big, but you don't have to be really fancy. I'm trying to cut this on my desk, so bear with me. 
Maybe if I sit up, that's better. Okay, so you just want to do a rough shred because then these pieces will, as you can see, are shredded. And then you can just give it a quick cut across like that to make the pieces more manageable. And these are going to melt down a bit when they cook as well. So I just wanted to come back and show you how I'm going to prepare the cabbage for the dish. Hey my friends, welcome back. What I've gone ahead and done in my roasting pan here is combined my cabbage, my stewing tomatoes, and I've used two cans of stewing tomatoes, by the way. If you're going to use the frozen ones like I showed you, I wouldn't use the two I showed you. I'd say at least eight or, or nine in here. And then I've um, put in about three quarters of the jar of the sauerkraut. I'm saving the last quarter just to maybe see how it goes in the end. I may want to add a little bit more to have that flavor more um, more fresh at, near the end. <clears throat> I've also added our paprika, our garlic, a bit of the pepper, and a bit of the salt. So what I'm going to do now that I've incorporated everything is I'm just going to kind of like make a little nest in here where our pork, not too too shallow or too deep rather and that's where our pork is going to rest and then i'll show you what i do next stay with me guys be right back okay guys our pork roast is in with our veg and what i've gone ahead and done is i've given this a good i mean a good dollop of extra virgin olive oil in and around on top of the pork everywhere um this is a lean cut of pork so i put a little bit extra and you know what this recipe does call for some olive oil or some oil of, of, of some sort because it really does add to that European flavor. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and season my meat. So I have a little bit of sea salt. And again, you know, it's, I always say this, it's easier to add than take away. So go easy in the beginning. Black pepper. I think you can do a little bit more there. Okay. And um, again, I'm going to go with some paprika. And what I'm going to also do is I'm going to add a little bit more paprika into the actual um, dish itself because I do have that olive oil in there as well. So I'll show you what we do next. Sorry about the angle, guys. <laughs> And then um, lastly, I'm going to put garlic powder, or this is granular garlic powder. Um, don't use garlic salt because you're already adding salt in here. And I'm just going to put a bit on this guy here. I'm not putting the chopped garlic because I don't want it to burn. So there. Okay. We're seasoned our meat. And we further seasoned the veg. Now what I'm going to do is gently and carefully add some water until you want pretty much three quarters of your roast to be covered. Just the top should be peeking out. There you go. And that's it. So what I'm going to do from here is I'll just give this a gentle stir. Gentle, gentle, just push down. And then I'm going to pop it into an oven that's at 350 C. And I'm going to bake this guy until the pork starts getting brown. And I'm going to cover it and continue to cook slow and low until that pork is falling apart. Be right back, guys, and show you what it looks like then. Hey guys, I'm back just to show you the halfway point. Um, what I've just gone ahead and done is I cranked up the heat to just brown our pork roast. Um, it's nowhere near fork tender yet, but I just wanted to get that brown color. He is submerged in there, so he's going to get really nice and soft soon. The veggies, the cabbage and tomatoes are starting to get really soft and nice. <clears throat> And don't worry if you get a few um, brown pieces. That's fine because it, it's going to be soft and tasty anyways. So at this point in the game, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the roasting pan cover on top of this and slow and low cook this until the pork is fork tender and a lot of the juices reduce the cabbage is completely soft and almost this will be like a, a almost like a thick stew um, I do like to keep a little bit of liquid so I did take some out and reserve some just in case I need it um, that's up to you and I'll be back when he's all done see you soon guys hey guys our manja is done it's so lovely um, <clears throat> the veg and tomatoes are so soft the um, cabbage is really soft and as promised the pork oh yeah look at that it's like with a spoon you guys oh it's fall apart tender so you guys i'm gonna enjoy this i hope you try this version of manja as well and thanks for watching please subscribe please comment please like and we'll see you next time on Memories of Macedonia. Ciao.